Joanna. These are the questions that your viewers have asked. From Gregory Le Perch. When are you going to tell your viewers that you are secretly an elf? An elf? Where do you get these crazy conspiracy theory ideas, Gregory? Who is your favourite booktuber and why is it me? Well, um... Okay, serious question. Who is your favourite booktuber and why is it Alan? Because... Philip Chase asks, which opera should fantasy lovers see and why? I love this question, Philip, and I might have to do a whole separate video to answer it. I think one of the obvious answers might be The Ring Cycle by Wagner because it is based on Norse mythology, and I know a lot of fantasy is based on Norse mythology, which you are an expert on. If anyone else is interested in this topic, let me know. I would be happy to make a video about it, but I don't know if it would get a lot of views uh, or if anyone else would be interested in this topic. But uh, some other operas that come to mind Mm, possibly Die Zauberflute, The Magic Flute by Mozart, uh, possibly Don Giovanni by Mozart. I apologize my pronunciation in other languages in general is not very good, but that opera does have a horror element and a statue comes to life. Uh, it's really, really well done. Also, we have the morally gray character, which a lot of people who love fantasy love. And then um, other options, maybe, I think Verdi is one of my favorite composers. I love his uh, operas like Otello, of course, beautifully done, uh, Shakespearean retelling. La Traviata, I love the female character in that. Regoletto, and that one has to do with the hunchback who is trying to hide his daughter from this evil duke. It's very tragic. Something that Verdi does very well is he will bring up a musical theme at the beginning of the opera and he'll introduce it in one context and he'll bring it back at the end of the opera, but it has a tragic com component to it. And you recognize it, but it, with the new context, it has a whole new element to it. And he does that so brilliantly in Rigoletto. It's heartbreaking, but it's amazing. Plus, the characterization in that opera is fantastic. There's a quartet in there, a famous quartet, where each character has, is expressing a different emotion at the same exact time. You have the soprano who's expressing heartbreak, and then you have the tenor who's flirting, and then the mezzo-soprano who's laughing and mocking the tenor, and then you have the baritone who's angry. So all these different characterizations brilliantly happening at the same exact time. It's amazing. I know that those don't really have a lot of fantasy elements per se. I'll have to do some research to see if I can find some other ones that might answer this question a little bit better, but those are ones that I recommend if you're really into your characters, really into a tragic or well-done plot. Those are excellent choices. Christine Valestad, have you ever considered doing ASMR? I would nominate you as you have the most relaxing voice. In terms of book-based channels, I think that maybe we need to convince you to read us stories. Christine, thank you so much for this. And that means so much to me that you think that about my voice. I when I was a little girl, or when I was old enough to get into books, I used to love to tell my mom about the books I was reading, and I would practically retell her everything I was reading, but it would always be around bedtime, and she'd always fall asleep every time I would tell her about the book I was reading, or I'd read to her. She'd always fall asleep, and it was so discouraging. I'd get so angry. I, I would say, I might as well be talking to a wall, and she said, I'm sorry, but your voice is so soothing. <laughs> so it actually made, gave me some anxiety coming on booktube. I thought, I'm just going to put people to sleep if I talk about books, <laughs> just like I did my mom when I was a kid. Get Right On In asks, will you ever make a video on how you do your hair? I'd be happy to do a film about my hair. If anyone's interested, let me know in the comments below. My alter ego, Abby Salter, asks, do you like musicals? If so, which ones are your favorites? I've never really been a big musical person, but I have been in a couple of musicals. I was Hava in Fiddler on the Roof years and years ago, and that was very close to my heart. I really enjoyed that role. I, unfortunately, I don't know as many as maybe I should. <laughs> um, like I've never seen Hamilton. I know that's tragic. I have seen a performance of one of the songs live and it was amazing by Leah Solanga. If you don't know who that is, she's the original voice of Mulan. And I also grew up with Leah Solanga. It was such a 
a pleasure to see her live because I grew up listening to her sing the role of Eponine in Les Miserables. I used to love Les Miserables growing up. I was obsessed with that musical when I was in high school and would sing all the songs all the time. And uh, Phantom of the Opera, of course. My husband and I like Sweeney Todd. I got to see that a couple years ago live here and it was wonderful. Lyra Bat asks, what got you into personality typing? As far as personalities, I think I've always had an interest in how uh, our minds work and how our minds affect our behaviors. And when I was in high school, I had a boyfriend who told me that I was an extrovert and that he was an introvert because whenever I felt emotions, they would show on my face. I couldn't hide them. And then when he felt anything, I would never know. That's what he told me anyway. So I thought that was very interesting. And that was the first time the whole concept of introvert and extrovert was introduced to me. After that, I was just always fascinated by sense of self and how we develop that. That has just always been a huge fascination of mine. It still is. Later on, I met my friend Andrew, who's an amazing voice teacher, and he made me read a whole book on the Enneagram to find out what my Enneagram type was. And that was pretty life changing for me once I understood that system, because it helped me to understand some patterns that I had my whole life that I've never really uh, been able to break through. And it helped me to understand other people that had different ways of being than me. I, I used to get frustrated with certain people, like, why aren't you like me? <laughs> why aren't you motivated the way I am or whatever? And it helped me to have a lot more compassion for what where other people were coming from who were different than me. And I don't think of personalities as who we are as people. I don't think that's what defines a person. I think that who we are is much more unique and undefinable than our generic personality patterns. But I still think it's very useful to learn about these, these patterns of behavior that we have. Ola, at the Reading Witch, what is the best, most accurate personality system in your opinion? As in Enneagram, MBTI, etc. I'm open to learning about all different types of personality systems. I think of them as frameworks, not necessarily as essential truths. <laughs> um, some people I know consider most personality assessments like a pseudoscience. And I think that's worth, you know, exploring and being open to things not always being aligning with the exact truth. But my favorite right now is the Enneagram. I love the Enneagram. It's been very useful for me, as I have explained. And I like that it has a pathway of integration as well as a, a description of disintegration so you can understand how to work out of unhealthy um, patterns that you're struggling with. And that's just been very useful for me. It's also really cool when I can recognize the personality type of different characters. The Myers-Briggs is neat, but I don't really find it as useful for me personally. And I find that it's not quite as reliable for me. I feel like your letters can change a lot throughout your life. If a system is really reliable, then it really should be the same uh, during one phase of your life as it is during another phase of your life. It should be the same whether you're in a good mood or whether you're in a bad mood. And sometimes I feel like the Myers-Briggs is a little tricky. Um, there might be some usefulness to it though. I'm also curious about this one called Ocean. It's also called the Big Five, which stands for openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. I'm always interested in learning other types of personality assessments. So if you have one that you want to direct me towards, please let me know in the comments. Kate R. Who's your favorite Lord of the Rings character? Is it the same between the books and the movies? My favorite Lord of the Rings character is Gandalf. I just love him. <laughs> I will never get tired of the mentor trope and he's the best. I just I just adore Gandalf. I adore him for his humanness as well as for his wizardly ways. He's fantastic. And it's been a long time since I've seen the movies, but I think that holds true for the movies as well. Sarah reads, asks, do you get more excited to read backlisted books so that you can join in on the hype or new releases so that you can form unbiased opinions and share something new with everyone. 
Yes, I actually right now I feel like I'm going through a phase where I'm a little more interested in backlisted books, but that might change. And I know that there are some really interesting new releases in the uh, that are self-published that are coming out lately. And those I'm actually a little more interested in than the new releases that are more traditionally published, believe it or not. I think one of the reasons why I'm not going as crazy right now for new releases is because at the end of last year, I put a lot of pressure on myself to get on those new releases. I went for The Fires of Vengeance, which is the second book to the Rage of Dragons series. I went for The Burning God, and I, which is the third book in the Popular Trilogy, and Rhythm of War, the fourth book in Stormlight Archive, and I made it a point to read those books as quickly as I could once they came out, and I kind of regret doing that, to be honest with you. I mean, I guess I don't regret reading them, but I just hate that I pressured myself so much to get to them, especially because I honestly thought each of those books were my were a little disappointing <laughs> like I thought that fires of vengeance for me I, I just didn't care for it as much as I wanted to I liked rage of dragons much much more and then um with the burning god uh there were just parts of it that were a little disappointing for me too they weren't quite to the level I had hyped myself for if that makes sense so I think just that hype and that expectation kind of worked against me. Nothing against those authors or those books. I still am glad I read them all, but I think I just want to read what sounds good to me right now, and most of what sounds good to me are backlisted books, but you know, you never know. I might change my mind and start going more towards new releases, and again, this is a little different with indie or self-published books. I'm a little more interested in reading those too. Sozon Propitis, what is the genre that you haven't delved into? but are most interested in doing so? I can't think of a genre that I haven't delved into. I, I've read a fair amount of nonfiction in my life. I've read all fantasy and sci-fi and historical fiction and horror thrillers and maybe not a lot in there, but I have read those. I've read literary fiction. I've read some of those. Um, I've read contemporary books. I've read young adult books. I haven't read a lot of middle grade books. Well, I read the Harry Potter series. I think that kind of counts. So I can't really think of a genre that I haven't read from, but of course I'm always interested in branching out and trying other genres. Uh, fantasy has my heart though. I find that every time I go towards another book in another genre, as soon as I'm finished with the book, I just want to jump back into fantasy. <laughs> Pilla Scard, are you a Logan or a Glockta kind of girl? This is actually a hard question for me. When I read The Blade itself, I think I would have said Glockta, but I don't know. I love Logan so much now too. Uh, how do I decide? I think that that tells me how good of an author or how good at characters Joe Abercrombie is because I thought both characters were so well written and I really liked the way he subverted tropes with both of those characters. Esme Rosalyn. If you could move to anywhere in the world, where would you choose to live and why? Maybe somewhere tropical. I know my husband and I have talked about moving to Hawaii. I also have a life goal of moving to another country someday, even if it's just for a short while, because I've noticed that some of the people I've admired most of my life are people who've been willing to do that, who've been willing to live in another country, not knowing the language and trying to learn, trying to adapt to a different culture. I admire that so much. I feel like that takes an amazing amount of openness and courage and I love that so I would love to challenge myself to do that someday and my husband and I have talked about that but I don't know where yet if you have any suggestions let me know but I do love tropical weather I love Hawaii I loved Morea in the the French Polynesian island of Morea uh, by Bora Bora we went there actually as our last trip before COVID hit and it was so beautiful it was absolutely stunning Manda May. What is your favorite food? Something that you could eat every day for the rest of your life and be happy. I actually answered this question in my very first q and I said that it would probably be the purple Japanese sweet potatoes, the ones that are kind of light colored on the outside and purple on the inside. Those are so good. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with that because those are amazing. I haven't had one in a long time, but I love those. The Brothers Gwyn. Which author 
got you into reading? My answer to that is probably going to be one that nobody knows of named Lois Duncan, young adult author of mystery suspense thriller kind of books. Um, I discovered her in fifth grade and I, as soon as I read her book, Summer of Fear, I just had to read everything that she had written. Scientist Reading World, what is your favorite video so far? Definitely my House of Chains video, which is book four in Malazan Book of the Fallen. And I know not a lot of people will get to watch that because it does have spoilers for book four, but I loved that book so much. And it felt so, so satisfying to actually make a video about it and put together my thoughts, which was very intimidating. I was very stressed out <laughs> leading up to that video, but it was so rewarding. Josh Yaks. What are your hobbies outside of reading? As you probably know by now, I love personality stuff. I learn, love learning about self-development and things like that. I'm also really into meditation. I don't know if you can call that a hobby, but I love meditation. I used to do a lot of yoga. I'm doing less of that now because of an injury, but I think I'm recovered, so I might get back into that. I also love to do artwork. Uh, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, I actually was an art major before I was a music major as an undergraduate. And what, uh, I used to journal all the time. I haven't been in the habit of doing that as much lately, but I, I used to love journaling and I love hiking. I love traveling. I love traveling. <laughs> um, so those are just some of my hobbies. The French Bibliophile. Where would you love to travel to and why? My husband and I had actually planned to go to Singapore and Taiwan uh, before COVID hit, and we had to unfortunately cancel those plans. We also had plans to go to Rome, Italy, which I've, I've never been to Europe. So I would love to go to Rome. I would love to go to Germany if I ever got a chance to do that, but I really want to go to Singapore. Uh, I think that would just be amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And I've heard great things about Taiwan. I have had the pleasure of visiting Thailand and Japan, which were amazing, and I already mentioned Morea. So I just, I want to travel everywhere. The Bookish Man. I want to know if you could spend the day with one fictional character, who would it be and why? Can I just go with Gandalf again? <laughs> I mean, really, he could smoke his pipe in the corner and be grumpy and I'd be happy. I just think he's great. Steffi was here. Do you read multiple books at a time? Or do you rather want to focus on just one book? I love this question. I wish I were somebody that could read multiple books at the same time. I tend to be pretty monogamous with my book reading these days. I used to read a physical book and then uh, when I was traveling, listen to an audio book that was a different book. And, like, and usually it would be a non-fantasy book if I was listening because if I'm reading, if I'm listening to fantasy, I have a hard time keeping track of certain details that are very important. But nowadays it's mostly just one physical book. I might try to stretch myself though and see if I can read a few different books at the same time next month just as an experiment and see if it works. We'll see. A journey for the pages. What is your favorite modern classical music piece? Shush! What is your favourite modern classical music piece? Alicia Guzman, do you sleep with socks on? I was waiting for this question because <laughs> I know you always ask it, Alicia. I, if I'm cold, I will definitely get in bed with my socks on. But the thing is, I heat up during the night. So I sometimes get in bed to, and then once I'm warm enough, I take off my socks and put them to the side. I think it's normal too that your body temperature goes up while you're sleeping. Hey, y'all, listen up. If you could own any one automobile, 
what would it be? I am not savvy when it comes to automobiles. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I have a Toyota Camry and I'm pretty happy. No, I'm sorry. I have a Toyota Corolla and I'm pretty happy with that car. Like a hybrid car would be nice because I want to do what's right for the environment. Liv Rioma, favorite singer or band? My favorite band growing up was Pink Floyd. I discovered them when I was 14 and I became obsessed, owned every album, knew every line of every song. <laughs> um, I, I still love Pink Floyd. I don't listen to them as much anymore, but I do love them. I also love the band Tool. Both my husband and I love that band. I love Maynard's voice. I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's incredible. It's an incredible voice. My favorite singer of all time is Beverly Sills. She died uh, many years ago, but I really loved her voice. I thought she had a beautiful soprano voice. Kisty reads, do you have any reading companions, i.e. pets? I have a dog and cat, Bagheera and Abigail. Ardi, imagine you're on a long road trip. Which three characters would you take along for the ride? And what would be your playlist? We'll go with Anamanda Rake and uh, Gimli and Shallan. That's pretty random. <laughs> and what would I play for music? Hmm, maybe Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn by WC. Mason in the Dark. If there was a portal into the fictional realm and you were forced into it, which series would you like to enter and who would be your best friend? Well, I'd love to go to Middle Earth or Lothlorien and I guess maybe I'll choose Legolas because, I'm sorry, I keep going with Lord of the Rings <laughs> stuff in this video, but Legolas is an elf and it would be great to have an elf friend in that world. Walker writes seven. What would be your fantasy favorite world city to visit? And which one would you hate to be trapped in? Oh man, where would I not want to be? I would not want to be in the first law world. I would hate to be trapped there. And I can't say who my enemy is because that would be a big spoiler. Angela, if you could compose a piece to go along with any book, which book would you pick and why? How would the piece sound? I think I'm going to go with Memories of Ice, and I'll try not to give anything away by just saying that there are these huge, amazing, climactic, powerful moments at the end, just beautiful, sublime, inspiring moments, but then you also have some uh, quieter, softer moments between different characters, so I think I could just hear so many different like musical themes in my mind, and even some comic ones, too, with a certain character that appears now and then. Nora Eld, favorite book you've read in 2021? The answer to this is House of Chains. Also, a close second is Midnight Tides. I just finished that and I loved it. The Codex Cantina. What is the first place you'd travel to once quarantine is over with no restrictions or money limitations? Well, I might have already answered this question, but my husband and I had planned to go to Singapore. That would be the most amazing trip ever if I got to go there. But I also just want to travel back to my to see my parents. <laughs> I haven't seen them in over a year now, and it's really sad. I miss them so much. I miss my my all my siblings too. They're all together practically, and uh, I'm far apart from everybody on the other side of the country. So I would just love to see them. Maybe I'll get that chance this summer since I'll be vaccinated soon. OG garbage tea. Who is your favorite X Men, and what does the bookshelf look like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I haven't watched X-Men in years. I saw the one of the movies a long time ago and I don't really remember any of it to be honest with you. So I'm sorry I can't answer that question. And my bookshelf looks awful right now. It's a mess, but I might do a bookshelf tour someday. Evelyn Hecklinger, what made you want to start a YouTube channel? Well, the story behind that is that I kind of started this channel a little bit as a joke because I noticed I had uh, two subscribers or three subscribers and I thought that was funny. So I joked that if I got to five subscribers, I'd do a Q&A video and I did. And then I just had some encouragement to keep going. So I did and I've been having so much fun. Uh, I had a lot of reservations about starting a channel, but I think part of me always kind of secretly wanted to. Amanda's bookshelf. 
What are some good fantasy series for readers that are new to the genre? I know the Mistborn series is recommended quite a bit. I think I would recommend that to somebody, especially if they're into video games. I thought about that when I was reading it. I thought this is this would be a great series for people who love video games and they're used to like the tutorials at the beginning of video games. I also really loved Warbreaker by Sanderson and I think that would be a really, really fun, easy fantasy to get into. And my husband loves Name of the Wind. I've read Name of the Wind. I liked it. I don't think I loved it on the level he did. But he, yeah, I think that actually is a really good one because I know for him, it pulled him out of a long reading slump. It made him inspired to read more fantasy. I also think that Foundry Side would be an excellent one. It's very funny and it's just a lot of fun. Jeremy Fee. In a battle of spacemen versus cavemen, who wins? and why? Jeremy, I don't know. <laughs> I watched that video and I was completely lost. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll go with the uh, caveman. You tell me what the right answer is. The Contradictorian. Legolas or Gimli? Right now I'm reading The Lord of the Rings and I just finished The Fellowship of the Ring, but I haven't gone on yet to The Two Towers. I'm planning to do that in May. But for right now, for The Fellowship of the Ring, I would definitely say Gimli stole my heart. Andrews Wizardly Reads. What is your favorite aspect of booktube? I thought a lot about this question, Andrew. I think, of course, we're gonna say the community. Isn't that the most obvious answer? I've, I've commented on a lot of videos. I've made a lot of friends through different channels and discords and things like that. But what really surprised me was once I started a channel, it actually opened me up to finding a whole bunch of other channels that I don't think I would have found had I not started a channel. And it's also helped me to learn about people who comment on my videos because when you're not on booktube and you comment on people's videos, you can connect with the booktuber, but you're not necessarily connecting with the other people who are commenting. And so when you have a channel, it gives you a great opportunity to connect to a lot of the people who are commenting. It's also just a wonderful platform for creativity and self-expression. Dark portents. My question for you is what advice you have for smaller channels to get to 500 and more as quickly as you did? Before I started a channel, there were three qualities I used to say that I looked for in a booktuber. One was authenticity. We want people to be themselves, of course, as quirky and weird as that is. Just being yourself, of course, that sometimes is a little easier said than done because when you start a channel, it's just, you're gonna be awkward. <laughs> and just kind of embracing that awkwardness, I guess, is part of being authentic. Uh, but two, the other part of that is um, passion. And passion might not look the same for two people. And then three, I've always said that being a good person or being a good human being, I think taking the time to engage with people who take the time to engage with you. So that's something I would say is really helpful to just make sure you're engaging with people and uh, I try to engage with people by watching other videos too. And what do I know? I still have a relatively small channel and I'm still learning and I'm sure there are a lot of things I can learn from those who have bigger channels than me. Josh Ferguson, how do you balance your time with life, reading, and booktube? Any tips or tricks? One of the best tricks that I have had that I haven't done consistently lately, but it's been the best thing that I've ever done for my reading life, is getting up early <laughs> and uh, getting... I usually like to read, and I couldn't do this for a long time because I was very injured, but to read on the exercise bike on the stationary bike. I own a stationary bike, um, but even if you have like a treadmill or something, or even if you just have an audiobook and go for a walk or something, that's fine too. But I like to do movement while I read. I, I find if I do that, if I get up early in the morning and do that, one, the movement helps get the oxygen going to my brain so that I'm able to wake up a bit. Um, but it's also a good way to make sure I get an hour of movement, an hour of reading before I even start breakfast. Steve talks about books and stuff. What was the first instrument you learned to play? Steve, I don't play any instruments. Uh, my degrees are all in voice and music education, and so my voice is my instrument. I don't play anything, though. I had to pass a piano proficiency exam as an undergraduate, uh, but I'm terrible at the piano. I actually have mild carpal tunnel syndrome and some back issues, so that makes uh, playing anything very difficult for me. 
I might at some point, though, take up the guitar. I would like to learn that, at least. She was only Evie. How did you and your husband meet? My husband and I met in a meditation group. Both of us are very passionate about meditation, and it was just a wonderful way to meet him. Uh, I had been part of this group. It was kind of a Buddhist group. I'm not Buddhist. In fact, it's kind of funny. If you came over to our place, you'd probably think we were Buddhist because we have Buddhas everywhere, but we're not Buddhist, but we both... Actually, we do value the teachings of Buddhism, like we're interested in learning more. I know my husband loves the teacher Pima Chandran, for example. But yeah, that's how we met. We met because of meditation. Nalani T, if you could be any magical creature, what would it be? Probably a fairy. I've always wanted to be a fairy. Thank you, Joanna, for answering all of these questions. This is interviewer Abby, signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll go ahead and put the giveaway winner after this clip. Thank you everybody for all of your questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to every single question. <laughs> I really do appreciate them though. And if you still have questions for me, please leave them below and I'll make sure to answer them there. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.